Good morning, everybody. We have such a packed agenda that I thought uh, we better start on time. So um, for those of you, I think I got around to meet everybody. My name's Amanda Walton. Uh, I'm the new program uh, manager for the OTA PTA EAP. Uh, as you can tell, I had my sunscreen confiscated at the airport yesterday and got a lovely sunburn. So <laughs> I get to be in the video with my lobster face, but it's all good. Um, so thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here. Really appreciate it. We hope that this morning will be um, valuable um, and that you'll have a few takeaways at the end of the morning. Uh, just a few housekeeping things before we get started. Uh, if you need to stand up and stretch, please feel free at any time. We've left the coffee and juice at the back of the room, so if you need to get up for a, a drink break, please uh, feel free at any time. Um, as you can tell, we're recording today's session. Thank you all for filling out your little uh, waivers to say that it's okay to have the back of your head in a, in a shot. <laughs> um, because we are recording, if you wouldn't mind just putting your phones on vibrate or silent uh, so that we don't end up with a, a ringing phone in the middle, that would be really great. We're giving Brenda special permission to leave her phone on because she's expecting grandbaby news. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we're going to break at 10 o'clock for about 15 minutes, just so everyone can have a, a bathroom break and check their phones and, and whatever. And we're going to try to hold the questions till the end, just because we have such a packed agenda. We want to make sure that we get through all the presentations, and then we'll have a question and answer uh, period towards the end of the presentation. So just jot down any notes if you've got questions that are on your mind as we go through. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to work the slides from here. Whoops, helps if I go in the right direction. Okay, so we've got a lovely pal uh, panel of presenters today. Uh, we'll take some time to just quickly introduce them before we get started. So first up we have Leslie, if you want to just wave Leslie, so in case people, many of you probably know Leslie. So Leslie is the chair of our Joint Accreditation Committee um, and she's a professor emeritus at UBC. She's been involved in uh, PT education at UBC for over 20 years and was the head of the PT program and the director of the School of Rehabilitation Sciences before immersing herself in interprofessional education. She's chaired uh, ACCPAP slash PEAC for over 10 years and was integral in the making of the Canadian PT accreditation program, uh, a respected process. So thank you, Leslie, for being here. Next up, we have Sandra Hobson. Uh, Sandra is a professor emerita at the School of Occupational Therapy at Western University, um, previously known as the University of Western Ontario, which is <laughs> what we were just chatting about, some of us. Um, and she's an adjunct faculty member at Pacific Coast University as well. And she's also a member of our jun uh, Joint Accreditation Committee and has participated on several uh, peer reviews at this point. So thank you, Sandra. Brenda, you all know Brenda. <laughs> Brenda's been a part of the Joint Accreditation Committee since uh, the very beginning in 2012. She's both worked as a physiotherapist for the last 23 years, uh, having practiced in multiple settings in both New Brunswick and Alberta. And uh, she's a member of the faculty at McEwen University since 1998. She's been the chair of the Therapist <coughs> Assistant Program for 15 years and now teaches full time. Um, in my notes, I said she recently welcomed her first grandchild, but we're still waiting on that news. <laughs> Hopefully today we hear some news. <laughs> uh, Karen Kosark, uh, again, lots of you probably know Karen. Uh, Karen's been a practicing occupational therapist since 1991. She's been teaching at Centennial College's OTA and PTA program since its inauguration in 2007. Uh, she re was responsible for the development of the course content and materials. And she's our, our newest member of the Joint Accreditation Committee. And oh, Pat's, just sit up there. yeah, <laughs> you can come sit with us, Pat. We won't bite. <laughs> I'm here. And no. You're, no, you can stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Pat, uh, yes, feel free to join us. Um, Pat has 40 years' experience as a physiotherapist and has held a variety of positions in education, program development, and planning. She taught at the University of Saskatchewan for several years in both the College of Physical Therapy and the College of Nursing. She developed and taught postgraduate programs for physical therapists. Her recent experience has been in systems planning and development in both healthcare information and in program planning for chronic illness. 
Pat's been at SAIT for the last five years, managing several programs, including the Rehabilitation Therapy Assistant Program, and she says, with a little stealth teaching on the side. Cassie also is not at the front, but that's all right. <laughs> Cassie Brockna. <laughs> Cassie's been an occupational therapist for almost 25 years with ex expertise in oncology and palliative care. Prior to joining the faculty at McEwen University, she was a sessional instructor at the, whoops, at the University of Alberta Faculty of Rehabilitation and Medicine. She's been involved in education of OTA and PTA students at McEwen for more than 15 years. So, welcome to our, present our presenters. Also joining us at the head table, we have Sandra Bressler. Uh, Sandra is a member of our Joint Accreditation Committee, uh, who's here to help us out today and, and be part of our question and answer period. So, um, Sandra, I don't have a little bio on you, but this is Sandra. <laughs> She's an occupational therapist as well. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, I'm just going to dive into a few quick uh, program updates. I won't spend a ton of time on these because um, they really are going to be a review for most of you. So we sent out our new uh, version of the newsletter in uh, the beginning of May. New format, we're trying the e-newsletter format. So interested to hear some feedback. Again, if, if you wanna drop me a line or, or tap me on the shoulder afterwards about what you thought of the new format. If you haven't subscribed or you didn't get it already, you can subscribe by going to our website. So certainly if there's anyone in your, within your program who you think should be receiving this, um, they can go to the, our website to subscribe. We're gonna to try to send it out uh, probably quarterly um, to kind of keep you updated on, on any changes that are going on in our program. Briefly, here's what we look like right now. As of, as of June, uh, we have 17 programs that are affiliated with candidacy status and 14 with accreditation status. You can get to the full list of affiliated programs on our website. Again, this just shows uh, the national distribution of the programs that are affiliated with the OTA and PTA EAP. The light blue shows the, those with candidacy stat, candidacy status and the dark blue accreditation status. So you can see lots in Ontario, and then uh, BC, Alberta, Nova Scotia, a few, and one in Newfoundland. So you'll see in your package there's a little uh, wanted poster. We're looking for peer reviewers, particularly physiotherapists and bilingual peer reviewers. I know I'm speaking to the choir, most of you in this audience are already part of our pool of peer reviewers, but if there are others within your program that you think would benefit from being a peer reviewer, um, please spread the word. That This um, table just shows what we're looking for, to fill for the next, uh, for 2017 and 2018. So if you um, are interested in joining a, a team, please let me know. Uh, or. I may be approaching you anyway, <laughs> so please be kind to me when I tap you on the shoulder, and hopefully we can get all of those uh, spots filled. Okay, so you would have seen in the, if you, if you took a look at that e-newsletter, e what's new, that you received by email, we've had a few um, policy procedure updates. Just briefly, um, ACC 14 candidacy status, it used to be in guideline form, and, and we basically just transferred it into policy format. Um, these are all available on our website to view. The new one, a ACC 15 Voluntary Withdrawal, that was created um, in response to a bit of a gap in our process, so we needed to just put something formal in, uh, on paper to address that. And then we revised ACC 09 Disclosure just to reference the new ACC 15. So you can find all of those policies and procedures on our website. And then I'm going to turn things over to Leslie to give a little bit of an update about T-Res. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here again. It's funny. I was thinking on the. I flew over from Victoria this morning on the Harbor to Harbor flight, and the the view was stunning. Uh, the, the light over Mount Baker and over the the San Juan and the Gulf Islands was absolutely beautiful. And I was thinking about this group. And I think Grace probably is the one that can attest to the fact how much I have cared about this group and the OTA, PTA programs for, I think, decades now. And what, what it reminds me of is my dad, which is kind of weird, but my dad was a hospital administrator and he worked for the government as well. 
uh, many, many years ago. He died about 10 years ago. But I would say probably 40 years ago now, he said to me, Leslie, you need to pay attention to, in those days the language was AIDS, you need to pay attention to the AIDS because they're going to be really important in the future. And I'm thinking 40 years ago, he could see the value of what we now call the OTAPTA assistance. And so for you to get to the point of having an accreditation program, caring about the quality, uh, looking to improve the quality all the time and looking for the roles that, that your graduates can play in the healthcare system. It's nothing short of miraculous. And so I'm really happy to, to be here today. Not without its bumps. We all know that we've had a bump with this particular criterion. And just to remind you that the, the criterion in the 2012 standards said clinical fieldwork education includes no less than 30% or 150 hours of the total time in each discipline for each student. So because of some issues, um, the, uh, there were some issues with uh, our CAOT board primarily, I think, uh, with the actual standard. We thought we had to do something about it. So we decided to use TRES for uh, collecting data. This is a program for those of you who haven't used it, uh, used in some programs, uh, particularly in OT and PT, to uh, have students electronically uh, add data to a program, you can run all sorts of reports. It was originally designed for medical residents, um, but has become quite useful in a number of different areas. So we thought, well, let's use that to see if we can, if we can differentiate between OTA, PTA tasks and activities and get some data from that that will help us to resolve this issue. We had an advisory committee, and thanks to all of you, I'm sure there are some people in the room who sat on that committee. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we had a research assistant working with us who helped to prepare the tables and look at the data. And with the advisory committee, we analyzed the data, drafted a report, uh, reviewed the report, and then came up uh, making some changes with a final report with recommendations. And that report was presented to uh, PEAC board and to the CAOT board uh, fairly recently. So the purpose of the study was to look whether we could, differ to whether we could differentiate between these tasks uh, during placements and to identify those tasks that are currently part of a combined experience that could be allocated either to OTA or PTA and to inform future revisions to the accreditation standards, particularly 3.4.2. So from the, from the data, we realized that OT-assigned OT and PT-assigned tasks can be captured and tracked. And I think it was a really useful exercise to actually try and identify what those are and then try to figure out, okay, who assigned this, who didn't assign this. Um, that it is possible to uh, develop a tracking system for fieldwork placements that can discriminate between OTA and PTA activities during the combined placements. And approximately 34% of student time was spent on ta tasks assigned by an OT, suggesting that programs are complying uh, currently with the requirements of 3.4.2. So we recommended that we revise 3.4 to add core to the second and third uh, criteria. Uh, and you can, I don't need to read it to you there, you can uh, see it there. But, so the core means that you must meet those standards in any accreditation process. Uh, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing, no ambiguity about that. We recommended that there were clear guidelines regarding evidence provided of OTA and PTA hours, and so we had a uh, working group struck to develop those tracking guidelines, and Amanda tells me that group has worked really hard and diligently and has almost finished its work, which is fantastic, so thank you to any of you involved in that. Uh, that on the occupational therapy profession front, there needed to be some changes because if you can't find the placements, then that's a problem. So how do we help to find those placements? So within the OT profession, the support for programs needs to be built. Um, and in the report, uh, there are several examples. And the, I have to say from um, Elizabeth Steggles and now Allison, Douglas, thank you, uh, Alison Douglas, uh, the, the, between Elizabeth and Alison, there's been a huge improvement, I think, in the focus on the, uh, on the OTA side, particularly. Uh, recommending clear communication and adequate timelines so that the standards for 2016 will be published by August, three years for people to adjust to any changes, and a recommended timeline, which is in your package so that you can see the timeline there. And support to collect and format the required evidence for submission, and I think that'll come out of the tracking uh, working group and providing you with materials that will really help to uh, help the PRT members, the peer review team members, and the joint accreditation committee, as well as yourselves, to make sure that we do the best we can with this standard. 
And so from, from our two governing bodies, the CAOT board and the PEAC, the recommendations were approved by both. And you have this in your, uh, your handout so you can see the uh, report recommendations and the, the timelines. The strategic plan is also in your uh, binder there. Uh, we had a strategic planning session in the fall, I think it was. Uh, Lillian Bain was an external facilitator who came in and we had good representation from OTA PTA as well as from PEAC, CAOT and uh, the Joint Accreditation Committee and, and COPEC. So I asked these folks, <laughs> COPEC, yes. So in looking at the strategic plan, uh, and it was a very thoughtful day, a very, very thoughtful day, um, revised the, the vision or confirmed the vision as advancing quality. OTA and PT education, looking at the purpose, optimizing the contribution of OTAs and PTAs, uh, looked at our values, and then the primary goals. Uh, working with you to help prepare for accreditation, uh, accrediting, doing the actual accreditation, improving the understanding of the role of OTAs and PTAs to the health and wellness of Canadians, and ensuring a sustainable and effective OTA PTA accreditation program. So if you have any questions about uh, the uh, documents that you have in your handout uh, at the end of our sessions, then feel free to uh, pipe up and ask us.